Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. The compassionate king Ambrosius Aurelianus could not help but shed tears. Wishing to build a fitting memorial for them, he sought the advice of Merlin, the intriguing heritage of Britain's Neolithic megaliths. Stonehenge, Avebury, and Associated Sites, Part 2 of 2. Continue watching to find out more. Continue with your war, cause such evil like you has no gratitude toward the citizens of the world who nourished you until you became so powerful, then you used your power and privilege to kill them instead. The residents of the beautiful Isle of Man welcome you with Fulcher Ort in the native Manx language. Blessed viewers, I am Album. The friendly Manx people cherish such kind-hearted friends as you and wish you abundant inspiration and bliss. Welcome to part two of the two-part programme, entitled The Intriguing Heritage of Britain's Neolithic Megaliths, Stonehenge, Avebury and Associated Sites. Unexplained and beautiful are the structures of Stonehenge and the similarly intriguing surrounding location. The stone circle, or henge, is close to the village of Avebury, Wiltshire, and has captured the whimsy of many visitors reflecting on ancient human history in Great Britain and what may have taken place here. 30 kilometres to the north, an ancient hinge bank of limestone measuring almost half a kilometre in diameter runs through Avebury village. The hinge encloses an outring of 27 sarsen stones, some of which weigh up to 50 tonnes. Inside are the remains of two, and possibly three, smaller circles of stones, including a centrally located U-shaped stone and the remnants of a ring stone. A ring stone is speculated to have been integral in making geometrical and astrological alignments. Similar to the avenue at Stonehenge, a 15 metre wide pathway, now known as Kennet Avenue, leads to the central rings and was once lined with pairs of adjacent stones. Only a few of these remain. This ancient avenue connects to another site around 1.5 kilometres away known as the Sanctuary, which, according to archaeologists, was a wooden structure. English visionary and vegetarian William Blake penned the much-loved poem and did those feet in ancient time, which was adapted into the stirring hymn Jerusalem by the Church of England. The poem was inspired in part by Stonehenge and Avebury, William Blake's close friend, 18th century physician, clergyman and archaeologist William Stukeley, suggested the structures held a deep spiritual significance. He specifically nominated the Druids as the ancient guardians of Stonehenge and other sites, proclaiming himself an arch-Druid practitioner of ancient and true religion. With roots in Britain's past and in ancient Celtic cultures, records of the Druids date back to the 4th century BC, and did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Excerpt of And Did Those Feet in Ancient Time by William Blake, Vegetarian. Inspired by William Stukeley's determination to warm out hearts into that true sense of religion, William Blake evoked sites like Stonehenge and Avebury as the ancient past, where the grains of humanity were either offered to Christ, the Lamb of God, or the dark satanic mills of the universal threshing room. His words are a reminder for individuals and society to always strive for Jerusalem, the classical metaphor for spiritual ascendancy, or risk falling into hell. 
Sicilian Greek historian Diodorus Sicilus is said to have referred to Stonehenge as a sacred precinct for the Olympian god Apollo in one of his Bibliotheca Historica books between 60 and 30 BC. He said, Apollo is honoured among them above all other gods, and the inhabitants are looked upon as priests of Apollo, after a manner, since daily they praise this god continuously in song and honour him exceedingly. And there is also on the island both a magnificent sacred precinct of Apollo and a notable temple, which is adorned with many votive offerings and is spherical in shape. Even while so many human beings go permanently malnourished, more than half of all land under cultivation is given over to crops destined for livestock consumption. Dr. Richard Foltz, PhD, Vegetarian. Amicable viewers, we'll pause for a brief message and be right back, here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to the intriguing heritage of Britain's Neolithic megaliths, Stonehenge, Avebury, and associated sites, part two of two. Scientists working on the site using sophisticated techniques to see under the Stonehenge region have found an exquisite complex of historic structures, monuments, and ancient burial mounds which have lain hidden for thousands of years. Stonehenge is mentioned in Historia Regum Britannia, or The History of the Kings of Britain, a Latin compendium of Old English, Welsh, and other Celtic folklore. His Majesty King Arthur's legendary magician, Muridan Wilt, or Muridan Emrys, was renamed Merlin by its author, the 12th century bishop and historian Geoffrey of Monmouth. According to Book 8 of the History of the Kings of Britain, His Majesty King Ambrosius Aurelianus was King Arthur's uncle and brother of King Uther Pendragon. After King Ambrosius Aurelianus won an important battle in the 5th century, he worked to restore the nation to its ancient state, repairing the churches and re-establishing peace and law. He went to the monastery near Karkarodok, now Salisbury, and visited the monastery of Ambrius that maintained 300 friars. This was where the tragic event of the Britons, the treachery of the Long Knives, took place, costing the lives of many British lords and nobles. Upon seeing the victim's burial place, the compassionate King Ambrosius Aurelianus could not help but shed tears. Wishing to build a fitting memorial for them, he sought the advice of Merlin. Merlin said, if you are desirous to honour the burying place of these men with an everlasting monument, send for the giant's dance, which is in Killerus, a mountain in Ireland. For there is a structure of stones there, which none of this age could raise without a profound knowledge of the mechanical arts. They are stones of a vast magnitude and wonderful quality. And if they can be placed here as they are there, round this spot of ground, they will stand forever. Merlin further explained, They are mystical stones and of a medicinal virtue. The giants of old brought them from the farthest coast of Africa and placed them in Ireland while they inhabited that country. Their design in this was to make baths in them when they should be taken with any illness. For their method was to wash the stones and put their sick into the water which infallibly cured them. With the like success, they cured wounds also, adding only the application of some herbs. There is not a stone there which has not some healing virtue. At the behest of King Ambrosius Aurelianus, his royal brother, His Majesty King Uther Pendragon, was appointed to travel with Merlin to bring over the giant's dance. The book describes magician Merlin using means beyond human understanding to transport the huge slabs that comprise Stonehenge into position on the Salisbury Plains. While similar standing stone structures can be found all over Britain, Ireland, as well as in parts of mainland Europe, none are as grand in scale as those of Stonehenge and Avebury. 
However, in 1994, German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt made a most astonishing discovery that near San Hörfa, Turkey, birthplace of the patriarch Abraham, stood an approximate ring of T-shaped standing stones that predate Stonehenge by 6,000 years. Named Gobekli Tepe, which translates to hill with a navel, or potbelly hill, it is now considered to be the world's oldest known temple, with a construction date of around 9000 BC. This is also the land of the Biblical Old Testament, and it is worth mentioning that standing stones are mentioned in these scriptures 39 times, and that Hebrews and non-Hebrews alike would practice stone circle placement, often in a series of 12, to signify an important event, a covenant between peoples or cities, and as a symbol of praise. Could this be a connection with the monoliths of Britain? In 2019, London-based researchers analysed the DNA of human remains found at Stonehenge from the Neolithic period of 4000 BC and concluded that its builders were most likely from Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. Later, a team of archaeologists from the University of Bradford made a significant find near Stonehenge in June 2020. The discovery and mapping of an immense circle of subterranean shafts close to Stonehenge are described in new research that was published in the journal Internet Archaeology under the title A Massive Late Neolithic Pit Structure Associated with Durrington Walls Henge. Twenty pits have been found, located south of the Durrington Walls Henge Monument and three kilometres, or 1.9 miles, northeast of Stonehenge on Salisbury Plain. Archaeologists say that astonishing shafts in Durrington Walls date back to 2500 BC and form a circle with a diameter of more than 2 kilometres, or 1.2 miles. Each one has a surface width of up to 10 metres, or 33 feet, and 5 metres, or 16 feet deep, and are considered to be artificial. Despite many investigations, the mysteries of Stonehenge, Avebury and their associated sites live on, with much more still to be told. May these ancient monuments continue to fill us with wonderment and appreciation, as they remind us of the immense powers and blessings that can be attained only through God's grace. No to vegan, because you want to be a cannibal, not a real human. Noble viewers, thank you for your devoted company today. Coming up next is Burmese Chickpea Tofu, part two of two, vegan shan torpu thok, tofu salad, and vegan shan torpu gyo, fried tofu, right after noteworthy news, here on Supreme Master Television. May we always reflect on our own actions and walk in the light of God with a kind and compassionate heart. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WAU. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WAU. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WAU. Наши программы предлагают много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com касачерта schedule и suprememastertv.com касачерта wau.